Hi everyone, Tams here. In this video, we're going to talk about wax seals. For the past couple of weeks, I have been receiving a question that has pretty much, or questions that pretty much have the same theme, either in the form I'm receiving them in the letters that are sent to me or the comments that are on my Instagram and YouTube accounts. And so I'm going to address those today, or try to. Now I'm going to give you some thoughts on wax seals first and what just what I've learned so far and then at the end I'll do a tutorial on how to make the marbled wax seals that I featured in a photo on Instagram a couple of weeks ago and people really seem to like it so I'm happy to share with you how it's done. It's actually quite easy if you have the right tools. First things first, before you decide to put a wax seal on an envelope and most likely a lot of people that are doing that uh, they are probably sending out a very nice wedding invitation that contains more than just a card there's probably a return card and RSVP card so it's going to make the total envelope very thick so you need to think about just basic things first now I have this wonderful tool from my local post office they're great. They gave me this because I do a lot of uh, workshops and just promoting people, promoting snail mail. <laughs> so they gave me this. And it's a template and it helps you to see the size of mail that's going, that um, your restrictions to make sure it goes through the post office equipment. So for instance, I received a letter that does have a wax seal, it did not come off. But if you notice, the letter itself is going to fit easily through this slot, okay? So the thickness of your envelope should not be more than a quarter inch thick, and that's with the addition of the wax seal. And then here's an example of a very thick letter that I got. You can see it doesn't even go through. So if you try to put a wax seal on this, the odds of it jamming up or falling off um, pretty great um, also this is a great little tool just to make sure you're you're meeting your postage uh, requirements so anyway that's just the basics think about the thickness of your letter now let's talk about the wax itself there are several forms in which you can receive your wax or work with wax and there's also a couple of types let's talk about the types real quick if you really want to reduce your chances of the wax seal coming off in the post office equipment, I would go with what's called a supple or malleable wax. And they have those in various uh, craft stores, online, whatever. But look for and make sure it says supple or malleable. And if it doesn't, a good indicator is the price of the wax. So you can get some really cheap wax, which is fun to play with and um, take the chance as long as your envelope is thin. I've had the cheaper wax to go through as long as I kept the envelope very thin. Um, but your best bet is what's called a supple or malleable wax. And where do I get my wax from? I get it from various locations. Um, a really affordable option is Amazon, although you really have to pay attention and make sure the description says supple or malleable. And I also, probably my favorite site right now for just all things letter, wax seal, and that sort of thing is a site called Nostalgic Impressions. They're very good in their description about telling you if it's a modern malleable wax or a supple wax. And Several locations carry the brand J Herban, which is a more expensive wax stick, and it does say supple. Um, they're probably the most well-known for the supple, high-quality wax, and that's the wax I would go with if you are trying to seal a nice, um, substantial wedding invitation. Let's talk about the forms in which the wax sticks, or the wax come. Probably the most recognizable if you're watching this video is the one with the wick the wick on it okay and um, I have two here because I just want to show you this blue one is from nostalgic impressions and it the description says malleable modern wax and this one is just from I don't even remember but it was a little uh, less expensive 
and it said nothing in the description. So I can pretty much tell when I make a seal if it's, you know, a little more malleable. Um, but I have all kinds. The other forms that the wax will come in is you can just, just get the stick itself. Okay, and I'll show you some more about that in a second. And you can also get wax seals for your glue gun. I've used these before. The glue gun does get it very hot, and these tend to give you a more translucent look with your wax seals. But if you really want to do a lot at one time, uh, they, there is um, wax for glue guns. And then my most popular, my most favorite method of getting wax is in beads and I'm going to show you a little more about that in a second as we go to the overhead shot so let's move on to that so here we are with a little overhead shot of a lot of my wax sealing tools of course I have my wax sticks several of my wax seal stamps some a burner something to a candle you can just use a little tea light I've placed it on my old inkwell to make it pretty you do need um, you don't have to have spoons but if you are using the bead format that I am now preferring you will need something you can find these on Amazon very cheaply you can find a little fancier version like this in different sizes and then I use these old antique teaspoons too they work fine I had a bunch of them from a family member and they were a mix match set so I was like why not and then here are my wax beads. Now, I you can get these in different forms. You can get them in the really cheap form that we just talked about. You can get them in the uh, supple, malleable form. Um, what I have in here is really, I found a really good deal on a mix match, a bag that came in a variety of colors. Otherwise, you have to buy the individual colors to do this marble wax sealing uh, demonstration that I'm going to show you and it can get expensive <laughs> so uh, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks if you want to use the cheaper wax and um, to reduce the odds of the seal coming off but anyway these come in different they come like little stars they come in little beads and then me because I am kind of thrifty because I really like this method. I took some of my sticks that I had like this and I just cut them up into smaller pieces because to do the marble seal that I'm about to show you, you do need the wax in smaller pieces either in bead form that you buy or cut your wax sticks down. Uh, you also need a spoon and you need some type of um, heating element. So, we're going to get started and I'm going to make a marble seal. If you are interested in the particular um, set that I bought, I got a really good deal. It came with a wax seal. It came with a, about, oh gosh, about a hundred pieces of various colors. It came with a tea light and it came with this. I will link it below if you're interested in um, just kind of a quick kit to get started. If you want, again, if you want more expensive waxes, uh, you need to go online to, a, you know, places like um, Nostalgic Impressions, and they do have beads in various colors, but you have to buy the individual colors. All right, so I am going to make a marbled wax seal because I have these wonderful, let's see here, let me find them all. All right, I have these Game of Thrones. Okay, so you can see, I want to show these because they're two different sizes. The Targaryen dragon is a little bigger than the Stark uh, wolf. And so there's a couple of things to know. Depending, most wax seals are this color. I mean, sorry, are this size. This one is a little bigger than usual. But for the standard size, you're only going to need two, two beads. For the bigger ones, I would go with three. So we're going to just play with the... The Targaryen right now that's fun and for some reason when I think of the dragons I think of the red copper and let's do a gold so I think it would be fun to do those three colors so let's do that I'm going to <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so I've poured the wax down. I'm letting it sit for just a minute. And then put my seal down. I'm going to just let that sit for a second while I just mention a few things. Um, the re reason I really love this um, beaded form of wax and you know melting it over a tea light with a with a spoon, this really helps me not to catch my hair on fire. <laughs> Uh, I was having a lot of issues, especially in workshops. And then the other thing in workshops, you have to be really, you know, aware of your surroundings when you're using any kind of fire. And I did not want random people to be lighting up sticks with wicks, if you will. So this is a little safer version. And um, I think it, it gives you a little more control. I what do you think of that? It's not perfect, but you know, for demonstration purposes, I'm kind of rushing through it. The other thing is if you have some wax left in your spoon from previous times, if you're doing these marble seals, it's great because the wax just melts and it goes into your overall marble color. Now, if you are doing like me and you're cheap and you just grab your old great aunt's old spoon here, just be careful because if it gets hot, you know, it, I've never burnt my finger. It's never gotten hot enough to um, burn my finger but after a while it will warm up <laughs> so you may want to move to one of these with a nice little wooden handle or use the one that it comes with so anyway just keep in mind for that all right one more tip for you now I want to do a lot of these fun seals during the month of um, not only July when Game of Thrones comes out because my letter writing theme will be Game of Thrones of course uh, but I am helping out with a workshop in uh, Winter Park this month and uh, I'll link more details below and our whole theme is Game of Thrones and fountain pens and wax seals and they will have the Game of Thrones fountain pens there for people to check out and people will be able to make their own wax seals, all different kinds. And I want people, if I really want them to use the time to send a letter while I've got their attention. And another trick, if you're afraid the seal might come off in the mailbox, another trick are these little cellophane sleeves. What you can do, I've done this before, is you can... Make sure you address your mail first. Just address it. Don't put a stamp on it. Address it. Seal it. Then you can put it inside these sleeves. I'll link these below. I buy these in bulk and I'll link them below. I'm going to have these at my workshop. And you can just seal it up. And as long as the thickness is still within, you know, your requirements, these will go through the mail. And then there is less, less, less chance of your wax seal coming off this way as well. If you use these, please be aware you have to put the postage stamp on the outside. Now the and you have to make sure the address is showing through. But that's another trick for you to make sure your wax seal um, doesn't come off in the postal machines. Now I cannot guarantee 100% that what I've shared with you will um, keep your seals from coming off but I am just sharing with you what I've learned so far and I've done quite a few of these. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful. Like I said everything I mentioned I will link below in the description box and thank you so much for reaching out for, to me. Those that have thank you for asking questions and thank you for recommending that I do this video. If you have other questions, feel free to leave a message below. Thanks so much. Bye.